Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This module is on understanding AppLocker. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our Microsoft Certification 7680 exam, where we need to set software restriction policies, we need to set application control policies, and we need to set through group policy or the local security policy. We're going to focus our efforts in this video on AppLocker. If you haven't seen the previous video on software restriction policies, you might also want to look at that one. A lot of the concepts very similar between those two topics. AppLocker is a very new technology, so new that it's only available on Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. It also works on Windows Server 2008 R2 as well. So if you're running Windows Vista, you're running one of those other versions of Windows 7, you're running Windows XP, this AppLocker functionality won't work for you. You may want to consider running the software restriction policies. One nice thing about AppLocker, though, that you could not do with the software restriction policies is control this by user or by group. And that's a nice addition. You could set up a policy that might allow the marketing department to run a program, but not allow shipping and receiving to run a program. And it's all integrated into the users and groups for your Active Directory infrastructure. This also requires that a particular service be running on the workstation. The name of the service is the Application Identity Service. By default, this service defaults to manual, which means it's not going to run. We can configure AppLocker configurations all day long. None of them will take effect until we turn that particular service on. What's nice about that is because it's set to manual, we could start it manually ourselves, leave it in a manual form to test out our AppLocker. If it works, we can then set it to be automatic. If it doesn't work, we can simply reboot our machine and we're back to manual and we can fix any problems that we ran into. One nice thing about AppLocker is that there are particular rules that are always going to override allows. We, If it says to block anything anywhere, it's going to take that block. You can't override a block with an allow in AppLocker. And that's a little bit different than the software rules we were looking at in the previous video. The only difference with that is that we may create a, an implied block, a default block for everything that AppLocker does. So you may want to consider, when you turn on AppLocker, everything is blocked unless you set up some rules. So one of the things that that automatic block doesn't do is automatically block some of the allows that you have in there. Otherwise, nothing would work. So if you have a specific block that you have added, just remember that is always, always, always going to override any allow rules that you create inside of AppLocker. If you open up your gpedit.msc or you go to your local security policy to configure things, you go to your Windows settings under your computer configuration, go down to your security settings, and you can see in the last video we went to software restriction policies. Instead, we'll go one down to application control policies, and inside there is the app locker and all the things that we can do with it. And you can see the screen's a little bit different. We have some different settings here that we can choose from. We have a getting started where we can learn about app locker. This is a nice tutorial to see how this works. There is the rule enforcement configuration. This is very similar to the rule enforcement configuration we had with our software restriction policies. And then at the bottom here, we have an overview of how many rules we have configured for our executable rules, our Windows installer rules, and our script rules. Let's click our rule enforcement. I'm going to click and show you that you can turn on or off executable rules, Windows installer rules, and script rules from here. So you can globally enable or disable them right from this view. And if you do enable them, you can have them take effect, or you can put them in something called an audit mode. If you'd like to test these rules out before you actually turn them on, put them in audit mode, everything will continue to act normally, but you'll be able to go to the Windows Event Viewer to look in the App Locker logs to see if this was turned on, would that have blocked a certain program from running? It's a good way to make sure you don't mess anything up before you go live with a configuration. Under the Advanced tab, we have the option to look at or ignore DLLs, the dynamic link libraries. And as we mentioned in our last video, when you run an executable file, a program within Windows, it may load one or many DLLs along with it. Unless you set specific rules that are going to allow DLLs, you might just want to keep that in the default where you're ignoring the DLLs completely 
unless there's a specific reason. If you really, really want to tighten down a workstation, then you may want to turn this on. But then you're going to have to go in and manually configure what DLLs will be allowed to run when that executable is operating. We saw some of those categories before. Let's step through those so you know what those categories are referring to. The executable rules, it kind of makes sense. They are executable files, com files, those programs that run inside of Windows. And if we want to allow or disallow those, we might want to create some rules for executables. We also have Windows installer rules. And this is a little different than the previous configuration where it had to be downloaded from a certain place with a certain program. In the case of Windows installer rules, we're looking for MSI and MSP files to be run. And if those run, then we can assign different app locker rules to it. Notice that an important consideration here is that none of these rules that we're setting up have anything to do with administrative permissions. If you're not allowed to install programs based on your user permissions, you still won't be allowed to install them. This is not something that's going to simply allow everybody to install programs if we happen to enable these things. It will only enable the installation of programs if, by default, you can install programs. If you are administratively restricted with your user permissions from installing programs, then no matter what you do with AppLocker isn't going to make much of a difference. There are also script rules. If you're going to run BAT, CMD, JS, PS1, and VBS files, those scripts that run, those particular rules will apply to you. And just keep in mind that there are also a number of default rules that you can configure. When you turn on the app locker for the first time, there's no rules in there. And the default configuration is to block everything. So one thing that you can do is go into executable rules, and you can create some default rules. Go into your installer rules, create some defaults, and script rules, and create some defaults. And once you've done that, you now can make sure that the operating system will continue to run properly, even though you've turned on app locker. In our app locker, we can go down into our executable rules. There's no items there, no Windows installer rules, and no script rules there. But if we go into our executable rules and right mouse click, we can create a new rule from here. We can automatically generate some rules. We'll talk about that in a moment. And there we can create our default rules. And I'm going to create some for executables, which says if you're everyone, and this refers to everybody. There's not an everyone group, but this considers everybody on this system to be everyone. The default rule is to allow all files located in the program files folder, allow all files located in the Windows folder. And if you're an administrator, you can run all files anyway. You're covered. Let's do the same thing to our Windows installer rules. We'll create our default rules. And it's almost exactly the same thing where we can run all digitally signed Windows installer files, all Windows installer files in a certain path. And of course, administrators can do anything they want. And script rules, let's also create default rules for that. So now that we've got those defaults in place, we can feel pretty good that if we happen to turn on AppLocker right now, our system should continue to operate. And since I'm an administrator, I should be able to have the accesses I need to manage the system. If you recall from our last video with our software restriction policies, there wasn't a lot of give and take. You could either do large things or small things, but there was no middle ground. With the app locker configuration, we have an option in each one of these rule types for exceptions. So we can go into almost all these rule types and set an exception up. So we might want to say allow or restrict everything from a particular publisher except this program. And that allows us a little more flexibility. We could probably shrink the number of rules we have to have, and we can make our rules a little bit more sensical for us, ones that are going to work properly for what we need to do. One thing that does not have exceptions is file hashes. That is so specific. We're saying you can only run this particular file. Well, there's no exception to that. Either you can or you can't. So if you go into a, a file configuration, you're configuring a file hash rule, you'll see that you don't have this exceptions option popping up in the creation of that rule type. When you start working with the different rules, you'll see there's different options available for each one, a little bit different in the way they operate. The publisher rules are pulling information right from the file. So we can understand more about what publisher was inside of that particular executable file. What's interesting about this rule is we can have it affect not just the current file, but all future versions of a particular file. So you don't have to keep going back in and administering these rules, even if new versions of files come out. 
We've also got path rules, which are almost identical to the way that we set up rules in our software restriction policies. You pick a file or you pick a folder, and then you can allow or disallow executables to run either with that particular file name or anything that's in that particular folder. We also have file hash rules. Again, this is also very similar to the software restriction policies. What we add to this is a number of additional configuration options that are available only in AppLocker. Let's look at some of those. Let's build some rules now using AppLocker that's going to restrict our access to certain programs. I'm going to do an executable rule, I think, for this one. And here's the defaults that we had in there earlier. If I right mouse click, I can create a new rule right here. And before it begins, it takes us through this wizard. So already you're seeing a few things are a little bit different than working with the older uh, application restrictions that we were doing earlier in the software restriction policies. I'm going to click Next, and it says, what would you like to do? Well, I want to deny access for everyone. I could certainly choose a user or group that's in my domain or local on my computer. But in this case, we'll just choose everyone. And I can choose a publisher, a path, or a file hash to determine if this is the app that I would like to allow or disallow. Let's say Publisher for this one. I want to show you some capabilities of this one. And it says Browse for a signed file to use as a reference for the rule. And in this case, I'm going to go to the Microsoft Games. Let's go to Hearts, and let's choose the Hearts application. Notice it fills in the publisher, the product name, the file name, or the file version. Let's say that I also wanted to restrict other versions of Hearts that have been signed by Microsoft. So I can move my slider up one, and you can see that it changes the scope of this rule. And it still includes the publisher, the product name, and the file name. But notice file version isn't part of this. That means if I can now run in a signed file of any version of hearts.exe, this rule will apply. That sounds good with me. Let's click Next. I can then put, put exceptions in here. Maybe there is a particular version that would be OK. Then we can add that particular exception to this rule. In this case, I'm going to choose Everything. And there's the name it puts by default, hearts.exe, blah, blah, blah. There it is. That looks good. Let's create it. And there is my new rule. This is a great rule that's going to deny everyone access to hearts.exe. Now if we go down to our browser here, let's go to hearts, and let's run hearts. You'll notice that hearts still works. We haven't actually enabled the service or the configuration for this to be able to operate properly. So let's go back up to our app locker. And I want to do a couple of things under my executable rules and my app locker configuration rule enforcement under my executable rules. I'm going to choose to audit instead of execute or enforce these rules. I want to test this first and see if it's going to work and click OK. Because I've set this to audit, I want to be able to have logs available to see what's going on. But to be able to have AppLocker even work properly, we first need to start the service that enables the operation of AppLocker. So I'm going to go to my control panel. And it's going to go to my administrative tools and down to services. And one of the first services that comes up is this application identity service. And if we double click, it even tells you this determines and verifies the identity of an application. Disabling the service will prevent AppLocker from being enforced. Well, that's the one I would like to start. I'm going to leave it manual for now, because if there's a problem, I can always restart my computer. And this will automatically be disabled. But we're going to start it with just the Start button here, but leave it in a manual mode for when Windows starts up. Let's go back to our Windows Explorer and run Hearts. And because I'm in Audit mode, Hearts is still going to run just fine. There it is. But if I look at our Event Log, let's go to our Control Panel under our Administrative Tools and the Event Viewer. I can go to the Event Viewer under Applications and Services Logs under Microsoft. Under Windows, there is an App Locker option. There's three events that are in there. One was that a App Locker policy was applied successfully to this computer. I can see that Hearts EXE was allowed to run, but would have been prevented from running if the App Locker policy was enforced. And MMC EXE, which runs the Event Viewer, was allowed to run. We go back to our App Locker policies under configuring our role enforcement and say, OK, no more auditing. 
That rule sounds great with me. Let's enforce that rule. I should be able to go back to my Windows Explorer and double click hearts. And now it says that this program is blocked by group policy. For more information, contact your system administrator. And if I refresh my event log, you'll see there is an error here that says hearts exe was prevented from running. There's also some automation within AppLocker that allows us to create many rules at one time. Let's do some similar rules to this hearts rule. I'm going to instead automatically generate rules. And I'm going to say the folder that I'd like to analyze is everything under Program Files, Microsoft Games. And I would like to apply those rules to everyone. And we'll call this these sets of rules the Microsoft Games rule. And I'd like to create publisher rules for files that are digitally designed using a file hash for this. That looks fine with me. Let's click Next. And it's going to generate rules for me for 11 files, created one rule. I can review the files that were analyzed. This is all that it found underneath there, Free Cell and Chess and Spider Solitaire and Solitaire. And I can view the rules that will be created. And it really just created one big rule for any Microsoft files that are in there. And let's create that rule so we can see it. There it is. It's a Microsoft Games, and it's everything underneath that particular directory for that publisher. And there are no exceptions associated with it. Now, this is an allow rule. but I might want to make this now a deny rule inside of here, which means technically I should be able now to go back to my Microsoft Games directory, go to Minesweeper, and try to run Minesweeper. And it says, indeed, this file has been blocked by group policy. Now it's a lot easier than what we did with our software restriction policies, where we would have had to go into every single one of those folders and set some of those things manually. With this option under AppLocker, I can very easily and automatically create many rules or customized rules for many folders at one time. Let's review some of the things that we've learned in this video. Our first question, which Windows 7 versions support AppLocker? There's only two that support AppLocker, and that's Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. The next question, how can you test your AppLocker configurations? And if you'd like to go through and test before you're actually going to turn on any of these capabilities, then you'll want to take advantage of running in audit mode and looking at your event log to see exactly what might have been blocked if we had put this into effect. And our last question, which rule category would allow you to control CMD files? If you recall, we were looking at publishers and hashes, and in this case, script rules that can block those particular kinds of files from executing. That covers the information we needed to know about AppLocker, turning on AppLocker, creating rules, auditing, and doing some automation of AppLocker. If you'd like to see any of our Microsoft 7680 videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me an email, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.